Hey guys, um, thanks for coming to my webinar uh, relating to the BBB and your rating and um, what companies can do to improve their rating. Uh, I'm Chris Meyer, I'm of counsel to Greenspoon Martyr LLP. I'm down here in Fort Lauderdale and I've been practicing um, with Greenspoon for about the last 12 years. And I do consumer protection defense and regulatory defense and uh, class action defense. Uh, and I, I work a lot with uh, BBBs around the country and I, I thought this would be a pretty pretty good presentation to um, provide um, kind of out of the box and a different kind of topic than what you you'd typically hear a lawyer talk about. Um, so the presentation, um, just wanna do a few housekeeping rules. Um, you can submit um, a question anytime you want. Um, I think we're gonna wait till the end of the presentation to take about a half hour or so, and I'll get to those questions and I'll ask, I'll answer them and, and also, you know, um, feel free to submit the questions as we go. If you think um, something's relevant to what I'm talking about, I'll, I'll likely take a look at it and um, respond to it then. Um, but uh, there's a Q&A button down at the um, bottom of your Zoom panel. Just press that and uh, type it. And then just so you know, um, when you ask a question, uh, I'm not going to, I'll say it anonymously. I'm not going to say who answer, asked the question. And um, so um, no, no concerns about, um, you know, um, about me telling who's a asking the question. So um, let's kind of get to the presentation here and, and, um, and talk about the BBB. So um, I just want to start off by saying, you know, um, the BBB, it, it, it's an important, it serves an important function for consumers. And um, consumers look at the BBB and they give it a lot of credibility. Um, it's been around for almost, well, oh, actually over a hundred years now. Um, I don't think you can, you can, you can find many people that are, that, that don't know what the BBB stands for, the Better Business Bureau, or what the BBB does. Um, so it's, it, 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 it helps to have a, a good rating because consumers um, look to the BBB to see if a, to check a company out. And now that everything is moving online, even with the pandemic, even more than it was before, um, it's, and I, I think we said this in our introductory email, you know, it's real easy for consumers to just go online and, and Google a company's name and press BBB and then boom, up up pops the company's profile. So, um, you know, it, it's important to, to have a good rating with them and, and there's things you can do to foster that. Um, so I just wanna talk about some things, um, some sort of some the history of the BBB. It was a, it's a, it's a, it's a nonprofit company, I'm sorry, um, entity um, formed in 1912. There's several um, regional offices from the BBB. Some states have um, several offices within the state. Some states just have one BBB over the entire state. It's, it's, it's um, broken down over jurisdictional grounds over the U.S. And um, well, how it works is, um, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, um, the BBB acts as a mediator to, to um, mediate disputes between consumers and businesses. Um, they, they do um, act impartial and they, they try their best to be impartial. Um, but I don't think it's any secret that um, the BBB is is more or less a, a consumer advocate, although they they don't they don't represent the consumer as a lawyer would, um, but they do mediate. But they you know they they tend to take um, um, they're looking out for the consumer, if you will. That's sort of their their mission. And nothing wrong with that. Um, so if we go to the next slide, so how your how your company. Um, response to BBB uh, complaints um, can have a, a real big impact on, on its rating. And I'll, and I'll explain the nuts and bolts of how the rating works when we, when we get a little further into the presentation. Um, but you should have a designated person within your company that responds to BBB complaints. You can set up an email address for uh, the BBB to send your company complaints and you can set up several e email addresses for them actually. And that should go to a designated person who, who again, responds to BBB complaints and who, um, who responds uniformly. And, and, and there's, 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 uh, there's a good reason to have that. Um, one is that you want it to be a responsible person that's gonna file the um, BBB responses on time. And you want it to be a person that can write fairly well. Um, and also with it being the same person responding, your responses will, um, be uniform in nature, which is which is good because these complaints are all on your BBB profile, your company's BBB profile. 
Um, so all the, to, to get into the sort of the, the nuts and bolts of how a complaint should be um, responded to, um, you kind of want to briefly address all the concerns that the person that complained raises. Um, you know, it, 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 it's very, you know, obviously they're complaining about your company. They're not probably saying nice things. And a lot of these complaints I've seen thousands of them probably, and, and, and they're, you know, they're, they don't read very nicely. I, I understand that, but it's important that the company's response is not combative. Um, and, and that may be obvious, um, but I'm, but I'm saying that because I've seen responses from companies that, you know, essentially tell the consumer to go to, you know, where, and you're wrong and, you know, do all kinds of bad things. And, and you don't want that showing up on your BBB profile because frankly as I've got here on the on the on the um on the presentation it, it makes your company sound kind of mean and, and nasty and, and just not very consumer friendly but you'd be surprised what companies will put in their BBB responses. I think you know I think it's easy to take them personal and it's it's easy to get um upset and and and, and mad um but you don't want that showing through um on your response. It just it just doesn't it just doesn't look good. So if you go to the uh, next slide, whoops, sorry, I thought I muted that. Um, when, when we go, um, um, I'm sorry, um, if, if the BBB complaint uh, raises regulatory um, violations um, or, or legal violations, you know, the company broke the law and things, things of that nature, um, you, you don't want to make, you don't want to put any admissions into your BBB response. Um, saying, you know, yeah, we're sorry, we we broke um, the code X Y Z, and we won't do it again. And here's your money back. Um, don't do that. We don't want that in a response. That that that's never going to look good. Um, again, you want to be a friendly response, but you certainly don't want to the, admit to the violation of any statutes or regulations or anything of that nature. Um, you know, it's it's easy for me to say, you know, give a full refund when I'm not the one writing the check. Um, but really, it's and when responding to BBB complaints, um, it's 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 really a best practice if you can provide a full refund. Now, it, it depends on what kind of service and goods you're selling. I mean, those refunds can be massive, so I I understand if that's not possible. But if we're if we're not talking about a whole lot of money, then it's it's best to give a full refund um, in in the response. Um, some BBB complaints, and we can put this to um, the health insurance industry. Frankly, um, you know, they'll the, the complainant will ask for a um, to pay the unpaid medical bills. I'm just raising that for an example. Uh, obviously, you, you know, you can't do that. That can be astronomical. So uh, I'm not I'm not sitting here saying just um, you know give a full refund, give everything exactly what they're asking for, even if it's thousands of dollars. Uh, I'm sorry, and um, I apologize about that. Um, but if it's if it's just fees uh, and it's not that much, provide a full refund. It looks better. Um, you also want to ask the person complaining, say, "Hey, please give us a call. Leave the number. They'll usually blot that number out when they put the um, when they put the um, response uh, onto the BBB profile. But it looks nice. Hey, call us. We're, we know you're concerned. Um, we're sorry you had a bad experience. Give us a call. See if we can resolve it. And you know, here's a full refund and um, you know, hopefully, hopefully they'll go away. Um, also, at the end of the BBB complaint response, you always want to ask the BBB to close out the complaint as resolved. So, if you're giving a full refund and you're you're you know you're giving a nice um, response saying call us, we didn't know you were concerned, we'd like to resolve your concerns. Um, and by the way, BBB, please close this out as resolved. What happens to a BBB complaint is they'll send it to the BBB. will send it to a complainant and the complainant will be given the opportunity to either respond um, not satisfied, respond with a follow-up or respond satisfied or they don't respond and the BBB um, determines that as satisfied. So if you're doing all these things and you're asking the BBB to close out the complaint as resolved, it likely will get closed out as resolved. And we'll talk about this a little later in a resolved complaint um, dings your rating the least, as I'm, as I'm sure you can imagine. So it, it's the best possible resolution for a BBB complaint, apart from if you didn't have it in the first place. Um, 
So let's talk a little bit about in the next slide, um, how the BBB assigns ratings. Um, so they have a, what they call an, a logarithm and um, it's, it's uh, based on several different factors. I'll, we'll take a look at that in, in the next few slides. Um, they try to be, and, and I think they do a pretty good job. They, you have to kind of um, see it from their point of view, the BBB's point of view that, you know, they have a, a, an enormous amount of companies to rate and, um, you know, they've got tons of people complaining. They're trying to mediate these complaints. And, and so they, they try to, to uh, produce a, a grading level and a logarithm, they call it. And they try to make themselves as impartial and objective across all industries and companies as they can. They, they don't arbitrarily assign a rating to a company. There, there's a science behind it, okay? Um, so what you wanna do is also, the person who checks your, who's probably the designated person that's gonna receive your BBB complaints, they should also make it a point to check your BBB rating, you know, every two or three months or even more every month or so, um, just to see that no surprises have come up, like the BBB may have sent you a letter and you didn't respond, um, things like that. So um, you definitely wanna make that a practice. Um, there's also reviews on, on, on the BBB also that they just enacted that, I don't know, about four or five years ago, where company, I'm sorry, uh, consumers can, can give reviews um, on their BBB profile. I think they did that really probably out of, um, you know, competition with all the online review um, services there are out there now. Um, but people can go to your BBB profile and submit a review and can respond to it, I believe, with, through some of the BBBs. Um, the reviews don't ding your rating one way or another. They're there for the public to see. So if it's a nasty review, you want to respond. I think you want to respond and, and, and try to resolve the person's concerns. Um, little note on the reviews, though. Um, you know, um, the BBB has um, things um, set up, um, a mechanism set up to, to where if they, they get a, 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 a lot of reviews, positive reviews, it wouldn't be negative ones, I don't think, but any kind of reviews, frankly, from the same IP address, um, they, they'll, they'll take action on that. So in other words, um, they have a way of ascertaining if a company is, 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 is frankly um, submitting reviews themselves. Um, so um, just, just something you wanna look out there, I'll look out for there. Um, so then let's talk about um, the BBB profile. It contains a lot of, um, a lot of information um, on, on your company. And, um, what happens there, the, the way it be, the BBB establishes a profile is on a company is you can, two ways, you can proactively introduce yourself to the BBB and that's, that's a fine way to do things. We, we do that often on behalf of clients um, or the, the company will get a, um, a BBB complaint and they're going to assign your company a rating, whether you like it or not, they're going to give you a profile. You can't say, Hey, I don't want this profile. Take it down. It doesn't work. They're not going to do it. Um, so often, more often than not, a company gets a BBB rating by getting a complaint. Um, it's established. They try to figure out where the company is. They give it to that BBB in that jurisdictional area. That BBB goes to, in Florida, it would be called SunBiz, the Division of Corporations page. And um, they get a bunch of information from the Division of Corporations page and they pop it up on their profile. This is the company's address. This is the company's principal. This is the company's um, um, uh, membership um, members for their LLC. So that's where they get that information when it was the company was formed. That all comes from the division of corporations page uh, or uh, agency within the, whatever state you're registered in. So that's, that's how they get that information. So let's talk about um, the ratings a little bit and how they assign ratings. So this, is, this was pulled um, from the BBB uh, page uh, a few days ago. Um, as you can see, uh, credit was given there to the BBB org. Um, dot org. We can go through these quickly, um, but and I'll, and I'll explain a little bit to you about them. Um, so the so the first one is complaint volume. So that's that's weighted by um, it says here uh, by complaint age. Complaints will sit on your BBB profile for three years, um, then they'll fall off. So if you got a lot of complaints, it's going to ding your rating. Um, unanswered complaints those hurt your rating a lot, and those are you know they're really unnecessary because there's no. There's no reason not to respond. You need to respond to a BBB complaint. You should. Um, if you don't, they're going to give you the, the worst possible outcome for that complaint. And if you get a few of them, you're going to have an F rating in no time. Okay. Um, those are unanswered co complaints. Unresolved complaints are those where 
the the complainant was um, you know angry. They didn't get what they want. It went back and forth, and and the BBB closes closes it out as unresolved. It happens. Um, it dings your rating. It's it's not as good as the one that is closed out in a satisfactory way. Um, they've also got this complaint resolution delayed. Um, that just means you're asking for um, um, extensions on responding to the complaint kind of habitually, and um, that I'm sorry, got this. That um, will ding your rating. That's, I don't see that a whole lot, but they have that listed. Um, so here, here's kind of a big one. It's called the failure to address a, a complaint pattern. So the, the BBB will send out letters if they think you are um, sort of a, you're doing, you're, you're not, your business practices aren't the best, your company's business practices aren't very good. And they'll say, hey, we think we've got a pattern of complaints here. We think you're Kind of doing bad things and, and we want you to explain um, why you're not and, and any changes you're willing to make and you really need to respond to these letters because whether you respond or not they're gonna slap it up onto your bbb profile we sent this company a pattern of complaints letter and they didn't respond um, they told us to hit the road they'll put whatever you put and that in and of itself will ding your rating so if you get one of these letters, it's important to respond and you know to respond as best you can and frankly work with them and do some of the things they're asking you to do. And you'll still likely get it popped up on your, on your profile and you can ask them not to and that always helps. Um, but it, it, it might say nice things, as, as nice as that can be. We found some issues with this company. We talked to this company. They said they were going to make some changes. So, um, so that's, that's a biggie and that goes into the rating a logarithm and that's the way the bbb can take your rating down if they see a bunch of complaints they send you a letter and depending on how you respond or if you don't respond they ding your rating okay the type of business you're in um the bbb categorizes businesses it doesn't like and um in certain ways and in, in that and in, in that will ding the rating i can i can give you one example in the debt relief industry um if they categorize you as an advanced fee debt relief company um that's a problem and it's a problem for your rating and um it will it will ding your rating so um you don't want to be categorized that way we can um well it, it, it can be resolved um so anyway, that's just an example. To, it can be resolved to a different categorization as um, um, a non-advanced debt relief uh, company. And I, I'm just giving that for an example. And that does not ding the rating nearly as much. Um, time and business, nothing you can do about that. Um, they'll pull that from the Secretary of State's page. Um, transparent business practices. I'm going down the list here that I don't see a whole lot of that. Uh, failure to mediate or arbitrate. Trade. BBB has their own mediation and arbitration um, forum that um, I don't see a whole lot of, so I, I don't see that that is a big um, issue. Uh, governmental action. So that's kind of a biggie. If your company gets sued um, by an attorney general's office or by a state insurance commissioner or the FTC or the CFPB, the federal uh, consumer protection uh, big agencies out there, uh, you can bet that that will likely make it onto your BBB profile. And um, it's gonna it's gonna hurt your rating, um, so that's something that will be on there. Um, sometimes, if you we, if you if your company um, enters into an agreement with a, a state attorney general, even that'll make it on there. Although um, those don't make it as often as the actual enforcement actions when they you know they actually sue your company. Um, so so those are prob that that's a problem for your rating, and that goes into the the rating uh, calculation for the BBB got this advertising review. Um, that's basically the same thing as the failure, uh, I'm sorry, as the pattern of complaints review. Um, the BBB doesn't like your advertising. That often comes when they find mailers or websites. Uh, consumers complain and say, hey, I got this mailer in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the mail and it said one thing and I called in and I didn't get this and you know, I got ripped off, says the consumer. Um, so they'll send, they'll have the, they'll have the advertising piece and the BBB will sometimes attach that advertising piece to the letter they send to your company and say, hey, what's going on here? Can you can you work with us to fix that? Again, your response will likely be put up onto the BBB profile. Um, so, you know, that you, you need to be careful in how you respond to those. Um, the BBB trademark infringement, that's a big one when you're um, 
when you're essentially if you're if you're advertising that you're bbb accredited and you're not they get very angry and they get they get they get um pretty aggressive and they send some pretty aggressive letters and so you really need to clean that up fast if you get one of those if, if you clean it up fast um they they tend to go away but but you, you, you long story short you can't advertise that you're bbb accredited if you're not they don't like it um so on to the next one this is uh, this is just um, the grading, the letter grade itself. Um, this looks like uh, it's uh, straight out of uh, our school days. Um, don't really need to go over that, but uh, as you can see, it's from an F to an A plus, um, and it's broken down um, accordingly. Again, that comes from uh, their logarithm um, and all the points on the previous page. Um, and the more points you get, uh, the, you know, obviously the better off you are and the better rating you have. So. Um, so on to our, our, our next slide. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about a little bit more about you know responding to um, these BBB uh, complaints or, or letters, I should say, um, or in information requests. I'm sorry. So the, apart from the letters I just talked about, the BBB will also send. Um, they usually they they sometimes call them standard business questionnaires, and they're, and they're just questions that the BBB asks of the company. Um, it's, it's really pretty pretty run-of-the-mill stuff. Number of employees, all addresses, um, um, names of principals, um, things of that nature. And um, licensing, the type of business you're in, they really um, should be responded to um, because it, it, they, they don't like not getting responded to and, and they're not gonna look at you favorably. But one very important thing in here um, pardon me, is that they'll ask for um, your your company's gross revenues. And, and I know a lot of companies, a lot of clients of ours, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to give that up. I mean, who I don't, you know, who who wants to who wants to just put out in in, in, in the universe how much how much money you made every year. And, and and I don't blame you for not wanting to to provide that, but but it, it's kind of important that you do provide it because the BBB doesn't publicize that on your BBB profile. Um, not saying it won't wind up somewhere else. We'll talk about that in a minute. But more importantly, the BBB sizes your company on the um, gross revenues it, it has. Um, and, and that's important because the larger your company is, the less complaints weigh against its rating. So if, you know, I'm, I'm just making up numbers, frankly, if, if you've got a company that has gross revenues of five million dollars a year. Um, if that company gets a complaint, it's gonna it's gonna count less towards their letter grade than a company that has um, you know five hundred thousand dollars in revenue a year. And um, you know the BBB does this because they again they've got a, a, a ton of companies to rate, and um, they just need um, sort of a a, a one-stop shop to size companies. They used to do it in different ways. And, and, and it's my understanding they just do it on gross revenues now. So the point is the, the, the larger the gross revenues you have, the, the less complaints weigh against your company. And, and you gotta be, you, you know, just, just be forewarned or understand that sometimes they do um, ask for backup on that. On, on, they'll ask for financial statements. I don't know if they'll necessarily be audited, but they'll ask for financial statements on it. So um, that's, um, that's just one important thing about responding to the BBB with their with on, on their on their information requests. And sometimes those will usually come out peri periodically and those will often come out when the BBB first assigns you a profile. So if they get a complaint or you introduce yourself to the BBB, then you'll usually get um, this standard questionnaire that they send out to, to really everybody. Um, so um, then, you know, again, we, we've got our advertising reviews and our pattern of complaints reviews. And um, I, I kind of talked about those already, um, but they got to be handled with care um, um, because the responses will wind up on the BBB profile. And a lot of the information you you provide, um, not gross revenues, likely not number of employees, that ends up on your BBB profile also. You can look at your BBB profile and there's a there's a portion of it where it has all the company information. So you'll get you'll get a, a flavor of what they'll they'll post up there about your company. Um, so so let's talk about um, the BBB and its next slide, please, with, with with its relationships with regulatory agencies. So, so you know, not not a lot of people really um, understand this, or, or 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 I shouldn't say understand it. Not not really a lot of people know about this, frankly. Um, but the BBB has uh, has has had relationships with um, 
governmental consumer protection agencies for, for many, many years. Um, and, and the reason is um, they're both in the same business. Um, they're, they're consumer protection entities, uh, agencies. Um, I think the BBB sometimes thinks of themselves as a, as a, as a pseudo protection agency and they've been around forever. So um, there, there's a very cl close relationship with them. The, the regulators um, really like the BBB for lack of a better term because the BBB acts as, a, as just a, as, as a portal for, for consumer complaints. I always say, you know, um, you know um, not everybody knows you can go to your state attorney general and file a complaint or your insurance commissioner or uh, your banking commissioner or the FTC or pick your, pick your flavor. But pretty much everybody knows they can go to the BBB and file a complaint. So um, again, regulators know this and they know that consumers go to the BBB. So if they, for lack of a better term, if they need consumer complaints to prove a case, um, the BBB is a perfect place to get those. And the BBB is, is often um, very willing to provide those complaints to uh, a regulatory agency who might have an interest um, um, in, a, in a company. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. So, and then also on, on this same topic, if, if the BBB, <coughs> pardon me, um, you know, gets a negative opinion of a company, and, and, and the way that happens is, you know, the, it may not get responses to the complaints, they're sending pattern of complaints letters, they're not getting responses, they're sending information requests, nothing, they're getting complaints left and right, it's not being responded to, it's kind of being responded to, so that's, and they're getting a lot of complaints, um, that's going to make the BBB possibly proactively reach out to a regulator, um, you know, and, and you don't want that, because again, it, it regulators listen to the BBB, and um, they get that call, or they get that contact saying, well, you know, we've got this company in your jurisdiction, and you're, uh, state, you know, and we've got concerns about it. We've got X amount of complaints and, you know, I'm going to email those to you and we think you should take a look at that. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty good fuel for a regulator to open up an investigation to issue, um, you know, a civil investigative demand, a subpoena, a, a, an all out enforcement action. So that's one real reason to, to um, keep a good relationship with the BBB and to keep your BBB rating as good as you can. Um, and it's also true of, you know, not all companies, I understand not all companies are, are consumer facing, meaning um, they, there might be um, a marketing level where, where they're a front end marketer and they're, they're marketing another company's services. I, I understand how that works. And, you know, those companies say, well, I don't really care about my BBB rating because frankly, consumers don't know the names of my, the name of my company. Well, if they somehow do, you know, if the BBB ha opens up a profile on you somehow, some way, um, you, you, you still want to keep that profile as, as good as you can. Yeah, consumers may not be going to check your BBB rating out because in this instance, they wouldn't really even frankly know the name of your company, but you have this regulatory issue that, you know, you don't, you don't want to, um, you don't want to deal with if, if you don't have to. So if you keep a good BBB rating, that's something that can, uh, that can help your company, especially a company like that that's in that position. So let's talk quickly. I know we've got a a little bit of, we're running we're probably right on time here, a little bit late, I'm not sure. Um, so let's talk about how you can, um, how you can um, improve your BBB rating. And, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of things um, you can do to do that. Um, so you can work on longer term goals at the BBB, you, you know, start responding to complaints. Um, I, I can tell you right now, if, if, if your complaints, if, if your BBB ratings, let's just use an example, it's an F right now, you know, you've kind of, it's been neglected, you haven't responded to some complaints, all this bad stuff. You can go on your rating, you can click at, you can click where the rating is and you can click under it, it'll tell, it'll tell you the reasons why. And it'll say, you know, four unresolved complaints, three unanswered complaints, uh, we didn't, sent a letter, wasn't responded to. Well, you can go back and, and, and do all those things and, and, and respond to those complaints proactively. I'm sorry, even uh, proactively, even, even if they're past due, the BBB will always reopen them. You call them up and say, hey, can you reopen these? Send it in, nice response, refund, not refund, be nice and, and get, it, get those complaints that were closed, that were unanswered, closed out as resolved. And just by way of example, I, I, you know, I don't, I, I'd have to look at the specific profile, um, but you know you, your rating would likely go up from an F to you know a, a D or a C, just just like that, in resolving those things. 
So, you know, you can, you can work with the BBB on any unresolved issues they may have and, 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 and develop a relationship with them. Um, and, and, and that really goes a long way. Um, they'll, they'll begin to take an interest in your company. Everything has to go through their algorithm, but they'll plug it in and the, again, those complaints is resolved. Um, and the you know, pattern of complaints letter was addressed. The advertising letter was addressed. And the, the, uh, again, I'm just speaking hypothetical things. If your BBB profile has all these nasty you know, things from the BBB on it, they didn't respond, you know, those will be changed too. They responded, they're trying to work and it, it will improve and, and your rating will improve. So, and over time um, you can, you know, if, if you don't get any, if you get few complaints or you respond to them on time, you can, you can really turn it around. I've seen it happen. I, you know, I've seen it happen um, lately, really um, in a really, really good way. Um, so, so those are the things you can do. Um, you can contact, you can go to the next slide. I think this is the final one. Um, you can um, contact the BBB and just, again, develop a good relationship with them. Um, and I, I have it here. There's, there's a lot of quick fixes. Those are the ones I just talked about on the, really the slide before. And, um, you know, there, there are things you can do to, uh, to improve your rating. Um, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing for consumers to see. And that's a good thing to keep the regulators away. And um, it's just, uh, you, you, you know, it's always nice to be deemed as a, as a good corporate citizen um, from the BBB. Uh, so guys, if you have any questions or anything, um, I guess now would be the time to take these. Kind of miss um, talking in person, you know, um, with uh, people raise their hands and stuff like that. But I've got some uh, Q and A's and I think I have a chat here. Um, our, our local BBBs basically, <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not going to, uh, put names up. I was almost read the name, but this is good. Um, our local BBBs, basically a franchise. I always thought of them as, um, bad things. Um, so yeah, they kind of are that, 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 that's a good way to put it. Um, uh, I don't think they're set up specifically like a franchise. Frankly, I don't know their corporate structure. Uh, I believe they're a 501 C3 and, um, but they are set up under um, separate jurisdictional uh, BBBs. There's usually a, C, a CEO. Um, there's a vice president of advertising. There's a, there's a whole staff that, I don't know, there's usually, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 people working there, people that respond to complaints. Um, so, um, yeah, and, and I know the BBB, a lot of people don't like them. I, I, I get it. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, business world doesn't like them. Um, you know, it, it's just something you have to deal with and it's, it's, um, you know, you, you got to kind of play as nice as you can with them and, and it helps. And I also can say that, uh, and I won't name names or, or jurisdictions, but certain BBB jurisdictions are a lot more business friendly than others. Um, it's just the way it goes. Um, other BBB um, jurisdictional areas focus on a, on, a, on a specific industry, no matter where those companies may be located in the U.S. They, they consider themselves the, 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 um, the, prof or the, 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 the experts of the, all the BBBs on a given industry. Sometimes it goes that way. Um, so, so, yeah. Um, so the next question is, um, when I respond to the BBB, is it going to their national office or local? It, it's going to their local office. So um, once the BBB has a profile set up for you, it's 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 going to their local office right down here in Florida and our neck of the woods in Fort Lauderdale, where where we we have the West Palm Beach BBB. They're obviously located in West Palm Beach, been there many times. Um, and um, yeah, so you respond and uh, to the BBB at, at, the, at the local level, and they that's how it that's how the back and forth goes. Um, so here's a good question. Um, what's the process for becoming BBB accredited? That 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 that's a good question. Um, and uh, that's a that's you basically proactively. That as far as I know, they don't um, they don't proactively offer that too much, but you can proactively ask for it. Um, I know a few of the rules. You need to have a B plus, or you need to have a B or a better. Um, that that's a minimum. I believe you need to be in business for two years or more. Um, if you're in an industry they don't like, for lack of a better term, it, it's not uh, it's 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 not an impossible thing to get accredited. 
It's just more of an effort. Um, accreditation involves their reviewing your marketing, um, your processes and your procedures, especially if you're in an industry in the space that they're not, that they're not fond of, um, but it's doable. And I think it's a good thing. Um, I always tell clients who, who are in a position to get accredited that I think, I think it's a great thing. Um, and to expand a little bit on that a little, a, a little further, um, the BBB is also, they have, they have boards. Um, their local BBBs have boards made up of, um, of business people from the community. And um, they're not employed by the BBB. Um, they review accreditation things. They, they review things when, um, when it gets to an appeal on whether a company's, uh, you know, should be admonished by the BBB. There's, they, they serve functions. Um, but one thing you may want to do, and, and it's, 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 it's kind of a lofty goal, but, it, but it's doable, is to see if you can become a board member of the BBB, of, of one of your principals of your company. Um, that, that's a good thing to do. That, that's a step above accreditation, obviously a step above accreditation. That, that, that's a big deal. Um, but I've, I've seen clients do that. Um, it looks great. Um, I, I think they may have some advertising um, um, prohibitions on that, but either way, you know, it looks good if you're, I think if you're a, if you're a board member of a local BBB, you know, it, it obviously shows you're, con, you're concerned about uh, consumer protection and in, in, in providing, you know, um, the best services you can for your company. I think that goes without saying. So I think it's a good thing. Um, and I'm looking at this last one here. So that's a great question. Um, how does your company rating start? So the BBB, um, it, its rules change from time to time. Um, it's my understanding that a company will be giving get, will be given the NR rating, and it's not something I covered in the presentation, which I, which you probably can tell stands for um, for for not rated. Um, if your company is either one or two years old, so they have a they have a rule across the board. So they'll, again, they'll you go to apply to the company, they'll look at your secretary, the, your local secretary state state page, they'll see when you form the company. So if it was in the if, if it was in the recent past, um, their their um, theory on that is you know look we're not going to rate a company good and we're not going to rate a company bad. Um, because we just don't know that it's just a brand new company. And, and so they'll give you the, the, the no rating, the NR, which isn't always so bad if, if you've got, if, if a company has a bad rating and NR is better than a, than a bad rating. Um, but in, in under the NR, it'll say reason for a rating and you'll click on that and it'll say, well, the company's too new. So, so that's usually the case. I think within either six months or a year, um, if you don't get any complaints, you'll, you'll likely come out as an A. And, um, and you know, if you're, you know, no complaints and yeah, you'll likely be an A. So, and then at that point, you might want to consider accreditation. That might be another year. You may have to wait another year for that, assuming your company's brand new. Um, so let me read this one. That's a great question. Um, so the question is, <coughs> it, the, I, I'm going to put this to the pattern of complaints question um, or the, the, the letter the BBB will send you, we noticed the pattern of complaints. Question is, if, if, if the complaints say different things, um, it, 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 would that still qualify as a pattern of complaints? And it's a great question because in, in our responses, I, I often say that, that it isn't a pattern of complaints because you're naming like three or four different things. But the short answer to that question is, the BBB will call it a pattern of complaints if, if it's five different things consumers are complaining about. And they'll call it a pattern of complaints and I'll respond back and say it's not a pattern of complaints because it's there's only one complaint from each pattern. But um, I think it helps in the response. Um, but, the, you know, I think if you get if, if you're getting a, a lot of complaints, you're, you're likely to get the pattern of complaints letter because it's a way for them to, to sort of um, see what's going on. And it's a way to, to, to um, frankly, to get your to get your rating down within within the allotment. Um, but again, you want to respond properly. You want to work with them. You want to make changes. Um, and it's not, you know, they'll they'll say you should do this, this, and that, or tell us what you're going to do. You don't need to do every single thing. You don't need to do any of it, frankly. It's it's it's, it's the BBB. It's not a governmental uh, agency. But um, but it's best to 
work with them um, to show you're working with them and to sort of compromise on some changes for your for your business practices, usually advertising, operational stuff. So um, I think that's it. Um, I think I kept it under uh, what 40, uh, what 40, 40 minutes. Um, appreciate you guys joining. Um, you know, if you ever have any questions, feel free to give me a call, email, phone, cell phone, whatever, whatever you want to do. I'm always here. Um, again, um, if you guys have any issues with the BBB, um, please give me a call. And I, uh, you know, I've, I've been, I've been working with BBBs for, for many, many years now and, um, uh, can definitely, uh, uh, you know, get you in the right direction. So, uh, thanks for your time. I, I really appreciate it.